What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. At week 10 here in the SFL season, this is when serious contenders start to make a playoff push. And after winning two in a row, we have now dropped two in a row. We take on two subscribers today on the San Jose Industrials over in the NFC West. And I would say for all intents and purposes, this is a make or break game for your Tuscaloosa Terminators. Gotta make sure we get that record up three and six and not where I expected this team to be. But we're here. We got to deal with it. It's a reality. And all we can do is make the best of it and go on a run and hopefully uh, get closer to being in the playoffs. But here in episode 11, we got a big weekend store. We got standings now released for the yearly awards. So we are going to see who all is in the running for MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. And I got a feeling there's going to be some subscribers in there. You may already know that from the thumbnail. So we're going to go through that. We got two new subscribers joining the league, putting us at 50 subscribers in the SFL. A 50-piece McNugget. That's right, family size even. So really thank you guys. Just like last year of the SFL, I'm loving the engagement, and we got quite the community going on here, I would say. Got to also check out this San Jose Industrials roster, see what we're up against today. We got a lot to get into. Cue the intro, man. Shout out to my guy, Caleb Hayes on the Savannah Spirits, right now leading the charge for league MVP. We've played him twice, being that the Spirits are in our division, and he has showed us why he is a MVP candidate. So right now, Caleb Hayes, number one in the race for MVP. We also got Mason Buchanan of the Oklahoma City Eels, also in our division. So the one and the two right now for the MVP, both are subscriber players in our division. That kind of scares me, trying to get into a playoff spot. We're going to have to deal with, the, well, we've already dealt with Caleb Hayes. I believe we played Buchanan and the Eels one more time. So shout out to them. And then Dominic Young, Dominic Ooh. not so young, I'm going to call him, the 38-year-old Tom Brady build of the Portland Destroyers is number three on the voting. And then Cameron Moore on the uh, Salem Steelhawks, number four in the voting. So nice to see the top four front runners for MVP, all subscriber players. That is awesome. Josh Allen of the Providence Red Raiders in there. Trevor Lawrence of the St. Petersburg Manatees in there. Definitely not having an MVP season in real life, I would say. CJ Stroud of the Memphis Suns. And then Lamar Jackson of the Jersey Shore Dees. But then we also got Lucas Thomas of the Boulder Rockies, number ninth. And then Deshaun Watson. Okay, uh, parallel universe, definitely, that we have going on here. Oh, hell no. In the SFL, uh... <laughs> Jameis Winston, enter Jameis Winston, but Deshaun Watson of the Coyotes also there as well. And then coach of the year, we're not going to be up there, but Jonathan Gannon of the Roswell Revolution, Raheem Morris, out. don't know how the Spirits or uh, the Rockies aren't number one for uh, coach of the year. They're both eight and one, but Raheem Morris, Shane Steichen, Brian Callahan of the Suns, Jim Harbaugh with the Sharks. Brian Dayball of the Albany Argonauts, Doug Peterson with the Manatees, Gerard Mayo of the Massachusetts Smithies, Zach Taylor of the Coyotes, and then Robert Sala of the Port, uh, Providence Red Raiders. On the NFC side, our very own J.J. Huntington of the Tuscaloosa Terminators is leading the charge. Then we got Isaiah Moore, so shout out, J.J. I hope you have a big game today, brother. We're definitely going to need you. Elijah Moore of the Spirits, Derek Henry of the Revolution, any... Also, Ty Huntington. Okay, so two of the two out of the three Huntington brothers, anyways, on our team have made it into voting for Offensive Player of the Year. Daniel Banks, Caleb Hayes, Mason Buchanan, and then also Graham Briner of the Oklahoma City Eels. Defensive Player of the Year, I don't think we have any subscribers here. We do not, unfortunately. Not a lot of subscriber defenders in the league. You know, there's some, but... Not that many. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Drake ah, May of the Industrials, who we play today. Okay, that doesn't make me uh, feel very confident, but all right. DeAndre Smith of the Spirits, nice to see him in there. Floyd Butler, Tommy Pickle of the Rebels, and also Drew Thompson, our quarterback of the Terminators. Now, you know, not really an accurate stat because 
Some players are going to be rookies. Some are going to be one year. Some are going to be two year. It all just depends on the player that I change out, you know, but still uh, always going to highlight a subscriber that's doing well and earning himself some awards, most definitely. But best QB, we got Caleb Hayes, Mason Buchanan, Cameron Moore, Ashton Saber of the St. Louis Sentinels in there, Craig Ray of the Albany Argonauts, Alex Thompson of the North Carolina Flyers, who we have not played yet. They're in our division, haven't played them yet, but we should any day now, really. And then also Lucas Spicer of the Grand Rapids Lightning. JJ Huntington in here again as the best running back in the NFC right now. Daniel Banks not far behind him. And then superstar X-Factor Bobby Donuts of the Argonauts in that voting as well. Brown Briner of the Eels. So decent amount of subscribers here. Ian Tyler Seal, who just went off last episode, had his breakout game of the Steelhawks also in there as well. And no other subscribers. Not sure if we have, okay, yeah, Ty Huntington on our team in there. Number three for best wide receiver. Don't know if we have any more. We do not. Not going to have any linemen. No offensive linemen subscribers as of yet. Defensive line, no subscribers. Linebackers, I don't think. I mean, Roquan Smith on our team. That's cool to see. Not a subscriber, I don't think. But Roquan Smith, if you're watching, please like, please subscribe. And you could be in the SFL officially. Uh, no DBs. And then best kicker. We have one kicker in the league, Corey Booter. And he is eighth place right now in the standings for best kicker in the NFC. And over in the AFC side, nobody in here but Dominic Young, number seven on the Destroyers. So not, to, not nice to see that, but... Would like to see a little bit more. I don't think we have too many subscriber players in the NFC. Nobody in there for Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Dragon Zetron of the Akron Summits. Love to see it. Jesse Moore of the Jersey Shore Dees. And that is not it. Alexander Kleblek of the Destroyers as well. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Don't see anybody on there. No, no subscribers. Uh, Dominic Young, best QB, number one right now of the Destroyers. So nice to see that. Lucas Thomas of the Rackies also in there as well. And Chase Kaiser as well as Dragon Zetron. So I guess there's a little bit more than I thought in the AFC. Okay. But shout out to all the subscribers who are in the top 10 in voting for these different awards. Still lots of season to go. So hopefully we can see some more subscribers in there in the weeks to come. Two new subscribers joining the league today. And if you guys would like to join the SFL, if this is your first time watching, or if you're just not joined, check the pinned comment below. Everything I would need to add your player is in the pinned comment. As I mentioned, we are up to 50 subscribers. So let's double that puppy and get it up to 100. Also join the official SFL Discord. Link is in the description below. I keep all track of all the stats, the standings, uh, general chat for your crap talking needs and upcoming schedules, all that good stuff. And if you're so inclined, join my channel membership and you could have your player become superstar or superstar X Factor. But getting a look at Caleb King here on the Dakota Pronghorns in the NFC North. First player to join the Pronghorns, so I like to see that, like their jerseys as well. And again, I did make all these if you guys don't know. But uh, Caleb King got the Saquon Barkley build here, six foot 185 out of Texas. He is a elusive back, just like Barkley is. And he's got 93 speed to go along with 94 agility, 87 juke move, 82 break tackle. So overall, a very well-rounded back. Hard to break, hard to bring down. Looks like he can juke you, he can break your ankles, he can stiff arm you, he can do it all. And he is looking to elevate this Pronghorns team today. New DB joining the San Jose Industrials, who we will play today. So we're going to see Mr. Josh Pickney. Shout out at JP the Goonie down there in the comments. And also, I forgot Caleb King. Shout out at Cheese Stick Falling. Almost forgot to shout out your handle there. But Josh, yeah, we're going to see him today. And look at those jerseys, man. I know you guys like that. The San Jose Industrials. Kind of, uh, you know, industrials, uh, Silicon Valley-esque. And I'll show you guys the alternate jerseys. I actually got one for Silicon Valley in there as well. So 5'10", 190 out of Vanderbilt. And Josh is a zone type of DB, 93 speed. Not the best in man, but he knows how to play those zones. He's going to be lurking. He's going to be watching the quarterback's eyes and hopefully trying to jump some routes with the 89 zone coverage. Also 92 jumping and 78 catching as well. And speaking of the industrials, let's just scan their roster really quick here. They got Drake May under center and they got Kyron Williams and Chuba Hubbard 
and Benny Snell as their backs. Wide receivers, they got Zay Flowers, but they also got longtime subscriber SFLOG. First time, I believe, going to be seeing us play him. I know this season for sure. Not, I don't think we played him last season on Madden 24 either. But Yeezy is 5'11", 170 out of Oregon. He's a slot archetype. He's got 93 speed, 94 catching, and a very solid route runner, especially in that intermediate range with the 90 uh, medium route. Can also do stuff with the ball after catching it with the 89 agility and uh, can change direction, run pretty good, hang on to the ball. Yeezy's been having some really good games too, so he may be a threat to us today. Wandell Robinson and also Alec Pierce as well on the squad. And then tight ends, they got Dawson Knox, and that's about it. Pretty much just Dawson Knox. Offensive line, Orlando Brown, he's a good left tackle. Zach Zinter, good rookie out of Michigan. He could really be something in this league. Ethan Postich, the former Cleveland Brown, he's a center 78 overall, James Daniels as the right guard, and then Anton Harrison as the right tackle. Offensive line, okay, but uh, oh, they got Max Crosby, okay. He's on my team in my other series, the Akron Summits, and he's not doing diddly. So I bet you he does something today, though. So gotta watch Max Crosby, Kobe Turner, eh, okay. And Dexter Lawrence, so a really good defensive line. Uh, our offensive line's gonna have to play inspired today. Josh Uche is the left linebacker. Jawan Bentley, Micah McFadden are the middles. And then Alex Anzalone is the right linebacker. Cornerbacks, of course, Josh Pickney, but also DJ Reed. So a good defense here for the Industrials. A great defense here for the Industrials. Justin Simmons. Interceptions might be flowing today, guys. Buckle up because it, that, just, that just might be a thing. Kirby Joseph, strong safety. Jake Moody kicking the ball, and also Logan Cook putting the ball away. Sorry for the long-winded intro, guys, but got to make sure that everybody is up to date with all the happenings around the SFL. And we're going to switch it up today. Got to change something. Got to give us some, some kind of spark. We're going to go ahead and rock our Skynets. And then, of course, I'll show you guys the Industrials uniforms here. Aways, Homes, which I really, really like. And then I was talking about it earlier, the Silicon Valleys. Just the Silicon Valley colors. And then also uh, their, you know, logo that's on their their flag is on the helmet as well. We'll keep them in the aways today, but uh, I do like the Silicon Valley. So if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content and you're loving the series so far, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, help me get to 2K. And without further ado, let's get on down to Skynet Superfield and get ready for the game. But what will Drake May do to us today? That is the question. He's having a pretty good season. And, you know, uh, him and Yeezy Fuentes. And I don't know why they're in the... Am I crazy? I thought the Whites. I thought... I don't know. I thought the Whites were the aways for the Industrials. Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> but anyways, I don't care if they're wearing freaking purple. We got some work to do here. And uh, May going to send Kyron Williams in motion. He's running a route out of the backfield. And wide open there is Dawson Knox, the tight end. Subscriber safety, Brandon Moore able to get the tackle, but it was a nice pickup of eight. And for us to win this game, I feel like I'm a broken record, but I'm going to say it anyways. I don't think our offense is really going to struggle. We haven't really at all too much. Uh, it's going to have to be the defense. And freaking Jerry Hughes is still in here. I thought I took him out. Uh, maybe I can edit that here a little bit later because it's not supposed to be Jerry Hughes. Should be either Austin Kringle or Aiden Leslie on that side of the field. So I will take a look at that here in a bit. Let's send a little bit of pressure here at May. I'm going to use her up on Jax Vaden. See if he can get in the backfield. He's not. And there is subscriber Yeezy Fuentes making his first catch of the afternoon. Shout out number 11 there. And that one is good for nine. So good drive so far by the Industrials. Uh, May going to come out tight shotgun here with... Kyron Williams to his left. Let's use her up on Roquan Smith. See what he can do. And it's a check down to Kyron. Amari Taylor, our corner, is there to get it. And they actually say short of the line to gain. Now, do I sell out to stop the run, though? I'm not going to run commit as much as every bone in my body is telling me to. I'm not going to run commit. Bruh. Can Roquan? Oh, it's a quarterback keeper from May. Wow, the run pass option. Uh, that was actually really... Really well designed. I thought Kyron Williams was for sure going to have that. Drake May ends up making us pay for a first down. I'm trying to think of a rhyme there. Drake May makes us pay, but 
you know, I start freestyling, and next thing you know, I'm down by 30. So not going to do that. Oh, we had a shot at Williams from TJ Edwards. Luckily, his buddy Roquan Smith and former teammate, actually, was there to get him for a loss of two. That'll make it second and eight from the 44-yard line. And the Industrials here coming out gun. Let's guess pass. Let's uh, shade inside. Maybe get some pressure off of the edge with Leslie. No, but it's a bat down. Somebody batted that ball down. Not sure who it was. That'll make it a third and eight. All right, guys. Need you to play good defense, please. Kyron Williams going to go in motion. We're sending Roquan Smith. And the pass is off the mark there by Drake May. And that is really good to see because if you guys watch this channel, you just know how frequently teams pick up third downs against us. So even though that wasn't, you know, I would say that more on Drake May than anything, a uh, pretty decent punt there by Logan Cook as well. It's good to see him off the field. And the question is, can subscriber quarterback Drew Thompson elevate us back into playoff relevancy? He's having a good season yardage and completion wise. Not that many picks, but also not that many touchdowns either. Now, our running back J.J. Huntington is kind of getting the bulk of those, I would say. So it doesn't really matter you know, how you score as long as you score, I suppose. We're going to start out running with Huntington. It may be a little tough to run on this line, though. I'm not sure. We're going to try to run behind uh, Trent Williams, and that's actually a decent pickup of six. Second and four. Got a long ways to go, but let's try Huntington on the screen pass. Got to make sure we... Oh, well, uh, he was not ready to receive that ball, apparently. Not really sure where the disconnect happened there, but not sure if it was on Huntington or if he, you know, just couldn't get off his block or whatever the case may be. Uh, but kind of a wasted opportunity there, I would say. And let's have J.J. Huntington block for us. I'm looking for probably Ty Huntington or maybe even Hopkins. I think Huntington is open, and that was just too good of a defense there. It was too good a defense by the defender for the Industrials. And we are going to be forced to punt, too. So regular punt fest going on here at Skynet Superfield to start this one out. That's going to be a bad punt probably from AJ Cole. Actually, not really. It's actually a decent punt. Now, can I get maybe a fumble with Bradbury? No. It was a good hit, though. And the Industrials will take over for drive number two. Both teams scoreless so far. But that could change very quickly for the Industrials. Hopefully not. There's Kyron in motion and would love to get some pressure back there on May. Not going to get it. Nice defense, though, or nice coverage by Roquan Smith, though, preventing the first down. All right, boys, let's pick this up here. May send in Kyron, so he will be empty backfield now. And, oh, Kyron open on the wheel. feel like, uh, who was it? Graham Briner of the Oklahoma City Eels, subscriber running back. He killed us on those wheel routes a few uh, weeks ago when we played OKC. So got to make sure we're not allowing Kyron Williams to do that here. Uh, we'll go ahead and use her up on the D tackle here. Silas Vaden, no pressure, and just a wide Buffy. open tight end there. I missed the tackle because I suck at life. And that is Dalton Keene, the backup tight end. Man, I don't know. I just I took a bad angle on that. I took a poor angle on that. And the Industrials are going to draw first blood. So definitely not what you like to see. Got a rebound here and uh, hopefully not go three and out on this next drive. And you get a look at the rushing TD leaders. RJJ Huntington is number one, but Bobby Donuts and also Daniel Banks in the mix as well. So, you know, again, nice to see some subscribers leading the stat sheet as I feel like they are in a lot of categories, actually. Um, press on DeAndre Hopkins, but... That's Jesse Bates up there, so I highly doubt unless he, uh, you know, blitzes or something. Yeah, not going to go that way, but the Chief Najoku, who is the SFL's leader, by the way, in receiving yards. I peeped that out pregame. He makes a nice catch for our first first down of the game. Come out here, I form from the 46. Uh, maybe Hopkins gets open here in the middle. That would be lovely if he could. I think that he did, and Hopkins has room to run, too. Remember, he's pissed off at us. He said he wants more targets. He's also wants uh, rushing attempts, too. Sorry, D-Hop. That's not going to happen, but I will try. Oh, that was almost blocked, too. Wow. I will try to feed you the rock for sure. Behind the sticks a bit here. Ball is on the 27, though, so we are in Corey Booter field goal range. 
But, you know, I don't want a field goal. There's Najoku already with his second catch of the afternoon. And he is our, I would say, our main weapon. You know, he's our main weapon uh, catching passes there. He, Like I said, he leads the SFL in receiving yards. And he just continues to do it week after week. So a fresh set of downs here. Going to roll out a little play action. Maybe D-Hop gets open. I don't really like it. And you know what? Maybe that's a good thing that I was almost sacked there by subscriber corner Josh Pickney because that one could have spelled disaster. We're going to try this RPO again. Tyler Boyd may have this. I feel like uh, usually when we get down here in the red zone, RPOs kind of work pretty well for me. We're going to give Boyd a shot. And I mean, just no blocking. Ty Huntington tried to do it, uh, but kind of fell a little bit short on that one. Field goal, I guess. Not the worst thing in the world here, but you know your boy wants more. So hopefully we can pick it up. Oh, Najoku almost had it. We tried to thread the needle there. It would have been a tough pass. He did actually get his hands on it, but alas, we are going to bring out Booter. So I got to shut up and drill this field goal, which I don't even know if I did. I did. Wow. Yeah, I'm not the best kicker, guys. I've, I've been on a little streak as of late. But I was just so much better in Madden 24 with kicks. I could turn that back to the old old style kicking meter. But you know what? I don't want to. Leave me alone. Okay. So 7-3 is the score. Uh, felt like our first drive was really good on defense. And now I am a little scared of these industrials. They seem to have figured it out. So got to tighten up. And, you know, we saw a pick from a subscriber corner, Jaden Taylor, the other week. And a couple sacks from some non-subscribers. So if we can see something like that. I'll feel a little bit more confident. If not, well, uh, well let's just say we'll see. So May coming out I form again. And going to dump it out to the outside there to Dawson Knox. But only for a short, minimal gain of two. Go ahead and press the line a little bit here. We're coming out zone. And Kyron Williams there to Drake May's left. He's going to send Williams. And whenever they do that, I always feel like it's going to be like a wheel route or something. Nope, it's Yeezy Fuentes making, I believe, his second catch of the afternoon. Drake May now up to 102 as well. And we're only uh, freshly into the second quarter. So I don't like that. So I'll tell you what, let's send a little bit of heat here at Drake May. Maybe Roquan Smith or somebody can get back there. No, oh, oh, come on. May flushed out. Somebody get him. It's going to be Robinson. So that was almost Amari Taylor, I believe. I really wanted a subscriber player to get a sack there. I'll take it. I'll take it nonetheless. You know, I'm not upset that Ashawn Robinson got it. Uh, just happy that we were able to actually get a sack. So that puts the industrials well behind the sticks here. We'll send a little bit more pressure with Roquan Smith. Oh, I had a chance at Williams. Took a poor angle, and we can't even <laughs> stop him. Wow, man. Just inexcusable. Kyron Williams picking up a first down on a second and 24. All right. The industrials are moving here. I do not like this at all. Let's uh, get in the backfield and stop Williams, please. Off target pass by May. He was targeting Yeezy Fuentes. Xavier Howard, the X-Man, was there in the vicinity. Yes, pass. Shade inside. And got to watch uh, Kyron coming out of the backfield as a receiver. Yeah, he's sending Kyron in motion. I never like when I see that. Uh, where's May going to go? Where's May going to go? Come on, some Someone step up. <laughs> Speechless. All right, ball's on the 25 here. Let's use her up with uh, Roquan Smith. Just play center field. May going to complete the pass to Easy Fuentes. All right, so a touchdown from the subscriber receiver, Easy. And boy, I just don't know about this Terminator squad, man. I just don't know. Uh, I'm I'm stumped. I'm stumped. We, you know, I can't even, I don't even have the luxury of saying we still got a lot of season left, like I was saying earlier on, because, I mean, we're here in week 10, so we don't got a lot of season left. And, uh, you know, anybody who's watched my series, you know, I won a Super Bowl with my uh, St. Louis Sentinels, won a Super Bowl in the first SFL season with the Toronto Thunderbirds. And those teams were good, but I feel like not even as good as this Tuscaloosa squad. 
but for whatever reason, it has just been a struggle and a half. We get the ball coming out of the locker room, so uh, really got to score here, make this thing a little bit closer. Come out, I form here, play action, and maybe... Uh, it's just nobody's open. What am I supposed to do? Nobody's open. Don't want to take a sack, don't want to throw a pick. It's going to make it third and 13. And to make matters worse, I can't even roll out to the left on my TE attacks. I used to do that. And I just, they just like don't allow you to anymore. Najoku, please catch that. Oh, thank you, David. Oh, he's still going too. What a weapon David Najoku is. What a absolute weapon David Najoku is. Three catches for 81 yards. And boy, oh boy, it has been a luxury having him on this squad. Uh, it's a good drive for us, man. But we got to pay it off with some points here. Maybe we can find Ty Huntington on this uh, crosser out of play action. We're about to find out. I mean, he's got a shot. Huntington catches it. Thank you. Oh, boy, we needed that. Nice pass there by Drew Thompson. And Ty Huntington does the rest, finding the end zone. He has exploded onto the scene since joining the SFL. And he is really, really taking care of business. That was a huge drive for us. And uh, probably about to knot this thing up. Or not knot this thing up. I'm sorry. I, I wish. Wishful thinking. 14-10. Draw a little bit closer. And we got about three and a half to go till halftime. Easy Fuentes. Four targets. Three receptions. 44 yards. And of course that monster touchdown on the last drive. Will he pick up where he left off? Or will our defense be able to tighten up? Certainly hoping for the latter. But you know. You never really know on this squad here. Uh, a lot of motion to Kyron Williams I'm noticing. So something to keep in mind it is Kyron and pass actually broken up there by Roquan Smith nice defense let's go pressure let's go pressure and also press up with the boys as well may gonna find Wondell Robinson Jaden Taylor making the stop but it's another third and two and do we go pressure again I think that we do I really think that we do Kyron Williams in the backfield gotta gotta watch him maybe we'll have TJ Edwards just kind of play coverage there and Kyron is going to get what he needed Brandon Moore subscriber safety making the tackle but another first down first down conversion by the industrials I'm going to probably just send pressure a lot in this game I think because we're going to need like some sacks on Drake mates good defense again by Roquan Smith this guy's everywhere and a key key third down coming up all right guys gotta dig deep here and get him off of the field Kyron in motion again as uh, he has been like pretty much all game. What the fuck? I would say, wow. Diving catch there by Wandell Robinson. It was a nice out route. Take us very close to the two minute warning, but just not well, really able to stop teams on third down. It's hard to win ball games if you can't stop teams on third down. Euster up on Jaden Taylor. He's playing the cloud flat, so maybe I can. You know, uh, have a little bit more control over him. No, it was a attempt there to get the ball out to Dalton Keene. But Drake May has thrown some off-target passes, I would say. So, silver lining, you know, if anything. Let's user up or audible up into man here. And just try to get some pressure in the backfield on May. May, come on, converge on him. There we go. That's nice defense. Another third down. I mean, they're really... I would say not in field goal range. I mean, it would be a it would be a far one, that's for sure. And we had pressure on May, and he throws it away. Here to save the day is Jaden Taylor. I was, again, trying to cook up a freestyle there, but it didn't really work. And they are going to bring out Jake Moody for a long field goal. Um, James Bradbury, can you get the block kick animation? Nope. Just go ahead and back up, and that's going to be way off target. Way off target from Moody. I mean, that was nearly from the center of the logo. So we got a chance to drive down here and score before the end of the first half. Let's freaking do it. Time is not really a factor either. Um, DeAndre Hopkins, I kind of like. Receiver has outside shade. I'm worried about Jesse Bates there, though. Yeah, I'm not even going to go to him. It's Najoku again, because why wouldn't it be? That time he was unable to hang on to it. I tried to possession catch. And uh, just kind of have him slide to the turf. Uh, unfortunately, though, that didn't happen. And come on, guys. Do not want to waste this. Do not want to waste this at all. It's a great opportunity for us. Let's streak DeAndre Hopkins. 
Single high safety. Uh, I'm not going to go that way. That time, Najoku, I'm telling you, man, that little Texas route kind of thing there. And the coach called it, too. That is almost a cheat code with Najoku. Clock starting to become a factor, but not really. We got all three timeouts. Let's see if we can get Huntington on the screen pass. Need some good blockers. Huntington with tons of room and also going to get out of bounds as well. That's what I'm talking about. Nice run after catch there by J.J. Huntington. And that is going to make it first and 10 with 40 seconds to go. We're definitely, definitely in field goal range. I'm going to put Hopkins on an out route, actually. I feel like he might, might be able to win this. Uh, can I custom stem it, too? I kind of want to custom stem it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. I like that. And we also got Najoku on the drag just in case we need him. But D-Hop going to make a nice catch. We'll go ahead and call a timeout there with 35 seconds till halftime. Mesh spot seems like a good call in this situation. Uh, I might just want to have Huntington block, though. Honestly, this could be Najoku or the other Huntington. It's the other Huntington. Oh, look, he outran the defender. Look at that. That was the CJ Smalls angle that that defender took. Wow. I thought for sure we were going to get tackled. And tell me that wasn't Josh Pickney. Let's get another Let's get another look here. Was that number 29? You know, it, oh, it wasn't. No, that wasn't Josh Pickney. It was Alex Anzalone. But a great run after catch by Huntington. His second TD of the afternoon. And that puts us in a really good position. 29 seconds, though, so got to buckle down. Let's see if we can go into the locker room with the rare lead. I would really, really love to go into the locker room with a Bruh. lead. And that might not happen. It might be tied up. Get some pass again. Shaden inside again. And where is May going to go? I mean, that's fine. They're going to have to call a timeout and settle for the field goal, which I'm fine with, you know. Assuming that Jake Moody makes this, James Bradbury has been known to block a kick. So maybe we get an animation with him. No, we're not going to get it. And I may try like one deep bomb to Hopkins, but unless something crazy happens, I will see you guys at halftime. So that will take us to halftime. Not it up at 17, but you know what? I'm cool with that. We get the ball. Our offense is humming. Our defense is playing well enough and going to have to uh, kind of regroup here. Think about some things. And then hopefully come out of the locker room and drive down the field and score a TD. Start things on the ground here with Huntington. Uh, you know, again, it just might be kind of hard to run on this industrials line. But there's a nice gain of eight. Always, always tough when you lose a yard or two on first down. And then you're playing, you know, behind the sticks. So nice to see some positive gainage there, if you will. And possibly we can do it again. We're going to try the left side here with Huntington. And got a pretty good hole there. Oh, I tried to squeeze in between uh, Huntington. A little brother-on-brother -brother action there. But nice first down picked up by Huntington. And that also could possibly open up some shots for play action as well. I think that we'll keep it on the ground for now, however. Because, uh, you know, I want to... Hopefully, just have a nice, methodical drive. Let's you double-team Dexter Lawrence. That seems like a really good idea. And maybe keep this going. Oh, look at Huntington with some moves. Now he's starting to get it together on the ground. That's what I'm talking about. Three really good runs. And we got this thing all the way down to the 39. Coach is saying PA cross, single back. And I do like that. Again, the running attack is working pretty well. So... Maybe that can open up some shots. Now, we got to be mindful of Jesse Bates up there. He always, always scares me. And, Bam. oh, thread in the needle is Drew Thompson. That pass was led a little bit to the left. That could have been an interception because we had a cornerback there waiting in the wings. But it was a great pass by Thompson. Led it the correct way as well. And we're inside the 20 here. Let's see if we can get Boyd on this RPO. Need a block from, ooh, <laughs> That could have been a disastrous play from Levi Wallace. It's going to make it third and three. Can Huntington pick this up on the screen pass? That is the question. Uh, I'm trying to audible the other Huntington, but it's not working. So whatever. We're just going to rock with it. Oh, that should be. Oh, it might even be a touchdown city. I can't juke Justin. Why do I keep saying Jesse Bates, by the way? I just caught myself there. It's not Jesse Bates. It is Justin Simmons. So if I've been saying Jesse Bates for this entire time, I apologize. Another really good safety, by the way. 
but this is Justin Simmons. We got it down to the two-yard line. Huntington has been the guy on this drive, so it's only fitting if he's the one to cap this thing off with some points. Speaking of Justin Simmons, he is right there, and Huntington in. Yes, so we got the lead. We do, in fact, go down after coming out of the halftime locker room and score. And it was what really impressed me most is it was mostly the ground game. So shout out J.J. Huntington, MVP of that drive. That gives us a little bit of cushion. Don't know how our defense is really going to, you know, react to these uh, industrials. But we do go up by seven. And that also took a lot of time off the clock as well. First time having a lead in quite a while, I feel like. And let's make the most of it, please. We're going to send a little bit of pressure here. I don't know if that's necessarily the right call. Kind of uh, scared to get burned here, but maybe TJ Edwards can get in the backfield. No, it's Silas Vaden with the monster TFL. Loss of three. He's getting into it with Kyron Williams. Kyron, I think you're going to lose that battle, brother, because Silas is a monster, monster human being. And he showed it there. Nice to call his name. We haven't really called it, you know, really all too much this year. So that was a great, great play. And I'll tell you what, I'll use her up on Vaden again. You know, see if uh, he can do the same thing. It's Williams, and I believe he... No, that was not Silas Vaden. That was the other subscriber, Austin Kringle. But still good defense nonetheless. And don't look now, guys. We got him in a third and 11. I do realize that that doesn't always mean anything for us, but it means something. I don't... I don't know what it means, but it means something. May, where is he going to go? Oh, come on. Somebody blew coverage there. Somebody blew coverage there. We can't get Yeezy Fuentes. I do not even believe this. I do not even believe this. Wow. I mean, shout out Yeezy Fuentes, though. Shout out Yeezy Fuentes. That was monster. That was monster. And somebody just completely whiffed coverage. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was me. I don't know. All right, guys. Get back there. I believe in you psych just kidding <laughs> all right so Dawson Knox catches it and this back and forth contest continues I can't even believe the easy Fuentes caught that and I'll be honest I think I might have accidentally usurred up on the corner on that play which I never 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 do by the way never usur up on a corner ever uh don't know if that's what happened but I kind of think it is at any rate, it's 24-24. Maybe the ground attack with J.J. Huntington can continue to be fruitful. Uh, Patrick Peterson, don't fumble the ball. And we'll start this drive from the 25. It's a big down and distance here for us, but uh, Coach did call the little T.E. angle, so maybe Najoku can get open as he has been all game, and I'm just going to go to the turf. Not even going to risk that first down. Great play by the Chief. Let's go back to the ground game. It was working pretty good on our first drive of the second quarter. Maybe it can continue. And at that time, I mean, there was nobody there to stop Juwan Bentley. He pretty much shed his block instantly as, uh, you know, defenders seem to do against us. Not with regularity, but more than I would like to see. So another second and nine here again. Tough down in distance, but D-Hop is right there, and D-Hop still going. All right, so D-Hop having a pretty good game. That'll make it a third and two. Let's see what the coach is dialing up. I mean, they say run it. It's four down territory here, as much as I hate to say it. Uh, uh, I mean, there's a little hole there on the left side. Huntington has been running pretty well so let's see if he can pick this up fourth in inches wow could not plow forward and i mean this got to be quarterback sneak time right it's got to be quarterback sneak time let's see what the coverage looks like i mean there's that hole that i love to see the stanley yell that size hole every time i see that it's money drew thompson gonna plow forward that's going to take us to the end of the third. RPO hasn't really been working for us in this game. Now would be a great time. We're going to give Boyd a chance. And I mean, okay. I uh, wouldn't really say that that worked. It didn't not work, I guess is what I'm saying. Maybe the HB dive, you know, could easily be four down territory again. They are stacking that box, though. I do not like that at all. Uh, maybe bring over Najoku here. 
and we just got to get two yards. This is definitely four down territory. If it wasn't already, Huntington bobbing and weaving, finding the first down. He's running with purpose today. 12 for 52, but most importantly, the first down conversion. I mean, I don't know how I go away from this TE angle. Like the coach has been suggesting it all freaking game. And it was working really well earlier with Najoku. He's probably going to be my target again, which he is. And he hangs on. Wow, he got blasted there at the end, though. He got blasted at the end. So it's not as wide open as it was. I definitely like the PA cross out of single back, though. I see DeAndre Hopkins getting pressed, but I'm probably looking for Huntington or Hurst. It's Huntington or Hurst. Whoever is the most open first... Almost got sacked there. That was risky. It's Kobe Turner. Going to make it second and second and ten. I'm thinking really bunch trail. It's that Najoku little Texas route. Again, the coach is calling it, so I don't feel bad about it. But I need Huntington to block because we are really getting some pressure off that left side. And just show me Najoku getting open. Bang! It's a cheat code, brother. And I don't feel bad about it at all because the coach is suggesting it every single time. Let's just slow things down here and give the ball to Mr. J.J. Huntington, who has had a very productive second half, I would see. I would say let's also send his brother out in motion just to kind of fool the defense. No real uh, purpose of that. Huntington, though, getting it all the way down to the one yard line. I got a feeling that we're going to give it to the big fella again. All right, guys, we got two cracks at this thing. Come on, number 23. Get it in there. Yes. Man, J.J. Huntington's coming alive in the second half. That'll put us back up by a touchdown as well. 31-24 pending the extra point, which should be great from Corey Booter. We got ourselves a good old-fashioned shootout fun one down here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Now show me like a game ceiling interception or a game ceiling fumble. Like, is that too much to ask? Uh, apparently it is. Wandell Robinson gonna pick up great yardage, getting it to the 42 yard line. And of course I'm sure Madden, uh, okay, no. I thought they were gonna be doing that thing where they only want you to play, you know, prevent defense and stuff like that. I was uh, not about to be a happy camper. But let's see what Drake May does here out of the shotgun. It's Williams, but he is met there by Roquan Smith and I believe Aiden Leslie for no game. So I think we're just going to play good zone coverage here. Lockdown zone coverage. Everybody just stay in there. Simons, please. And definitely don't want to use her up on a, a corner. That much is for sure. And let's see if we can get Drake May and these industrials off of the field. May, he's going to be hit there. Who was that? That was Silas Vaden, a TFL and a sack, or maybe it was either Vaden or Leslie. I mean, either way, it was a great play, but let's see who it was. In fact, I think it might have actually been, was that Vaden? It was. Now that should go down as a sack. I mean, either way, sack, TFL, freaking whatever you want to call it. All I know is it's a punt. And if we play this clock right, pick up a few really key first downs, we could get our fourth win of the season, which boy, oh boy, do I really want that. Pretty good return there, too, by Jaden Taylor. And going to start this drive from the 23. Most definitely going to be J.J. Huntington time. So, Huntington, you've had a great game today. Ooh, going to be met there by Dexter Lawrence, who sheds blocks with the best of them. Do I just, I'm doing it. TE angle, you guys can see it's on the coach suggestions. And I am going to let this clock tick down a little bit further, but I'm probably looking for Najoku all day on this route. Come on, Thompson. Let's see if you can do it. Oh, bang! It's Najoku. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, no, he dropped it. Oh, man. Um, well, <laughs> it's not really what I wanted to happen. Uh, I'm going into my bag of tricks here. I'm going into my bag of tricks, and we're going play action. I mean, we got to be aggressive here. If we don't get it, I mean, it's going to be a punt, you know, either way. So we got to be a bit aggressive, and maybe we can hit Hopkins. Um, No, we're going to instead hit Kyle Hughes check of all people. Okay. So that drive did not really go the way that I anticipated it going, and not going to do anything... Funny or crazy here, just going to punt and hope that 
you know, our defense can continue playing the way that they have this game, maybe it's going to be a fair catch, okay? Easy one says at 5 for 128. Will we be going to overtime or will the Terminators get the victory? We're going to find out here very soon. All right, come on, boys. Ooh, send in a, uh, yeah, Kyron Williams been in motion about all freaking game. Oh, that's good defense there by Jaden Taylor. Easy Fuentes almost had a great catch. It was a little subscriber on subscriber action there. And Jaden Taylor is victorious on that one. So a nice way to start this drive. I like that. And we're going to use her up on the big fella, Silas Vaden. He's been doing his thing today. There's Brandon Moore. Couldn't quite get him, but Roquan Smith was there to do the cleanup. And we got him in a third and eight again. Now, I'm not just going to sit back here and play straight coverage. I'm going to have at least one blitzer. I think that that is the smart thing to do. It's going to be TJ Edwards. Can we get back there to May? And it is Edwards. There we go. Three sacks today. And I believe the industrials will punt. Because they got, oh, no. I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense. They they got to go for it, right? And, okay. Fourth and 15, man. I don't have a fuzzy feeling about this, though. I really don't. Uh, you know, I probably should, but I don't. And we're going to guess pass, and we're going to shade over top. Just do not get beat deep. Basically, just defend that first down. That first down yard marker. Oh, my God. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy how teams do that. And that's easy for one test, too. I got love for my brother, but it's like it's just like automatic when teams get in third and fourth down. And this is our chance here to really get some pressure on Drake May. He's empty backfield, so no extra blockers. Oh, oh, that could have been a game ceiling INT by Amari Taylor. So close, so close. Then he dropped it. It was still good defense, though, so, you know, there, there is that. But, man, that would have done it right there. That would have done it right there. And, unfortunately, we still got to play a couple more downs here. So, uh, come on, boys. Let's get it. Let's freaking get it. Please, let's get it. That's going to be the tight end. And getting out of bounds as well. I don't know, guys. A minute 13, but the industrials are close to the pay dirt area also i don't know what the pay dirt area is I, i've never said that in my life like that's that's the first time so okay it's uh you know i guess i guess you guys know what i'm talking about right okay industrial's getting very close i mean the most they can do is tie it so even if they do score here we're gonna still have a shot to uh you know to score ourselves but i just don't want to have to take that shot we played overtime against uh the mountain lions right i don't i don't want to play another overtime game i really don't it's kyron and uh we're gonna stop them but the industrials are have one timeout i actually just if they're gonna score like just score here please just score here so i can at least have another shot i don't want to take this thing to overtime man i really don't come on somebody get to may somebody get to may he's gonna chuck it out of bounds 27, seven, 27 seconds to go, second and goal. Man, oh man, I do not know about this at all. Come on, guys, please. Oh no, I left my spot. I left my spot. I was the one usered up on TJ Edwards and I left my spot. But that's, oh, they're going for the game stealing win. No way, no way, dude. No way, dude, they got ice in the veins. They got ice in the freaking veins. They're going for two here. I can't even believe it. I can't even believe it. They're going for two. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And they caught it. Wow. I mean, if they win this game, good on them. And we were right there too, man. You can't play better defense. We, I, I don't think I've ever seen a team do that in Madden. Just go for the kill shot win. No, not going to return that. I mean, the only thing we can really hope to do now, we got to get somebody in single coverage. I cannot. I'm, I'm speechless right now. I'm really speechless right now. I'm looking for DeAndre Hopkins to earn his money right now. 
Come on, baby. Come on, D-Hop. You can do it, D-Hop. Man, you want more targets, and I'm giving them to you, brother, but you got to come down with these. We're going to lose this game, and we're going to lose this in quite possibly, quite possibly, the most crushing fashion ever. Like, I, it's, this is, this is new to me. I, I've never seen a team do that. Like, I've never, never seen a team do that. Huntington. Yep. All we got is one more deep shot to the end zone. This is absolutely crazy, man. This is absolutely crazy. I'm sending everybody on the right side just in the hopes that DeAndre Hopkins can get open. I mean, it's unless he mosses somebody. P.I. Yeah. Wow. Shout out to the San Jose Industrials. They had uh, steel cojones. They had steel cojones. And that was like, man, we played we played really good in that game. But that's just like, this is the type of season. This is how this season has gone. Like, I just feel like no matter what we do, we can't get a win. We even had, you know, good defensive plays in this one as well. And what's the chances that they march down, score, and they go for two? And they get it. And it was a really good coverage by TJ Edwards, too. And they just get it. That is is the epitome of how our season has gone. Okay, Drake May, 343, a 66% completion and four touchdowns. Drew Thompson played good to, though too, 291 in his own right, 54% completion and two touchdowns. No interceptions thrown, which I love to see. JJ Huntington really picked it up in that second half, two touchdowns, 56 yards, only average 3.7, but that first half was pretty much abysmal. So everything, you know, just came down to uh, the second half. And how about subscriber wide receiver Yeezy freaking Fuentes? Six for 156 and a touchdown. Good game, my man. That's all I can say. GG's, brother. Najoku continues to be our number one target. I mean, he pretty much had <laughs> majority of our catches. Hopkins, we gave him a couple shots there at the end, but, you know, just didn't end up working out. And defensively, we have a Brandon Moore subscriber here. Eight tackles and one TFL. You love to see that. Amari Taylor had one pass defense, but he could have had that game ceiling interception. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. You can wish in one hand and do your business in the other and see which one fills up faster. Yeah, you guys get it. Josh Pickney had five tackles and two pass defense. So there you go. Jaden Taylor, five tackles. And I know we had... Some of our uh, linemen in here as well. Austin Kringle had two total tackles. Silas Vaden, though, two TFLs and one sack. I love, love, love to see that. TJ Huntington had two total tackles. And who else? I know we're missing somebody, right? Am I missing somebody? Maybe, uh, okay. Um, Aiden Leslie had one total tackle. And as far as kicking here, Corey Booter. One for one on the field goals and four for four on the extra points. But that might have just crushed our playoff hopes, guys. Get a look at the subscriber stats here in week 10. Jersey Shore D's do get a much needed victory for them over the Edmonton Coyotes. Lamar Jackson had a really good game. And tight end Jesse Moore, he went six for 58. No touchdowns, but uh, it was Cooper Cup getting a bulk of those, but still a really good performance. And then checking out these stats of subscriber corner Aiden Grau. He had seven tackles and also a pass deflection in there as well. Hey, at least the Albany Argonauts beat the Flyers. So we're not the worst team in our division unless we, until we play the Flyers. And we play the Albany Argonauts next week. Buckle your seatbelts for that. That should be a fun one. But Craig Ray here, wow, 359 yards, five touchdowns. And then Alex Thompson, the brother of our subscriber quarterback, Drew Thompson, he had 346 and three touchdowns. So that was, you know, a shootout just like uh, our game. And Bobby Donuts, he went 20. Oh, yeah, and I got to make sure to check. Yeah, Bobby Donuts went 20 for 63. No touchdowns. He was on a tear when it comes to the touchdowns. And did he have any receiving yards? He had one catch for two yards, but a nice convincing win by Albany. Older Rockies continue their tear. They should be 9-1 and one now on the season as they demolish the... Portland Lobsters and Lucas Thomas. We saw he was in the MVP voting there. He went 252, two touchdowns and an interception. 
and also his uh, subscriber wide receiver mate, Austin Lucas. He went three for 28. And Lucas Thomas also added 30 yards on the ground. So nice win by the Boulder Rockies. Portland Destroyers beat the Montana Mountain Lions. We got two subscribers on each team. Dominic Young also up there in MVP voting. He had another good performance. 320 through the air, four touchdowns, and also only one pick. So not too bad there, if I do say so myself. And receivers here across the board. We got Christian Bangle. He went five for 63. Uh, also two touchdowns too. Wow, nice, nice game from him. Alexander Klobleck on the Destroyers. He went three for 73. And Gavin Goat, two for 13 and a touchdown. So both of the subscribers for the Mountain Lions were eating. However, the win does go to the Portland Destroyers. Savannah Spirits eke out a close one against the OKC Eels. They pretty much got our division under wraps, I would say. I don't think that anybody will catch up to them, but pretty even stat line. Caleb Hay, and these are the, the number one and number two uh, players in the race for the MVP. Just remember that. So Caleb Hayes went 291, two touchdowns, no picks. Mason Buchanan had 290, three touchdowns, but two probably costly interceptions. Daniel Banks, he went 11 for 30, a touchdown. Mason Buchanan had 27 yards rushing. Brown Briner went 16 for 26 and a touchdown. Uh, he's more of a receiving back, though. And then Caleb Hayes, two for 10. Uh, getting a look at the receiving here. DeAndre Smith killed it as he normally does. Nine catches for 123 yards and a touchdown. And yeah, I mean, this is this is what Grom Briner does, man. I don't remember what playbook the Eels are running, but it's got to be something that has a somebody that has a receiver uh, running back as one of their like receivers. Maybe it's a. Uh, do I know who it is? No, I don't remember. But Grom Briner seven for or six for 76, two touchdowns. That's awesome. Also, Daniel Banks, he went six for 42 and a touchdown. George Smith three for 32. And Dallas Bolton, 4 for 25. And I believe that's all the subscribers on offense. And then defensively, there's subscribers all across the board on the Spirits. Linebacker Cam O'Shea had six tackles, two deflections. Trustin Smith had four tackles and also one deflection as well. I know there's some more here. Jackson Prime, he had three tackles and a TFL and a pass deflection. Eli Acro had three, had one tackle and one TFL as well. So nice all-around victory by the Spirits, and they continue to be a problem. St. Louis Sentinels drop to the Louisville Fighters, and we got to check on our subscriber quarterback here, Ashton Saber. He is also, no, he was in, uh, he's in the top 10 for best QB. I don't think MVP, I think it was best QB, but he had a really good game, 321, one touchdown, and a costly interception as the Fighters haven't really got too many wins so far this year. They get a nice one here against the Sentinels. And Toronto Thunderbirds eke out a close one against the Manatees, and the Thunderbirds were really struggling. I believe this is only their second win of the season. So, you know, we're not the worst team in the league, guys. Stay with me here. And there will be multiple seasons, too. I'm telling you, the Terminators will bounce back. But Jordan Baker, nice game from him. 313 yards, two touchdowns, and also an interception as the T-Birds get a much-needed victory. I mean, the Rochester Rebels just did the Fort Worth Rough Riders dirty, man. Absolutely dirty. And let's see how our subscriber wide receiver Tommy Pickle did. He did really good. Four for 71, no touchdowns. But, I mean, that was just absolute domination by Rochester. And last but not least, the Topeka Silverbacks get a nice win over the Grand Rapids Lightning. And QB Kyrie Brooks had a pretty clean game, very efficient, 263 and a touchdown, no picks. And Lucas Spicer, I mean, he was playing really, really good, kind of cooled off in this one, only 139 yards and one touchdown. And did he get his guy Floyd Butler going? He did not. And Floyd Butler has been killing it as of late. So nice, convincing win from Silverbacks Nation. So that's how everybody did in week 10. We got a freaking bye next week and we got to sit the troops down and talk to them. We play the Albany Argonauts next week. That's going to be tough. And then the North Carolina Flyers in week 13 who have a worse record than us. Right now, we're playoffs, probably not in the picture. I mean, I guess crazier things have happened, 
But right now, we just got to stack some wins together and, and get this football team to a more respectable record. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.